Welcome to the Hustler's Guide to Flow. I'm your host, Marcia Miyaki, and I'm taking you into the minds of some of the most incredible leaders in the medical, research, business, and yes, even spiritual fields to equip you with powerful insights and practical strategies to level up in business and in life. The next level version of yourself starts now. Welcome back to another episode, my loves. I have my favorite guest with me today, my love, Dan. Hey guys, how are you going? So I thought today we could talk about arguments <laughs> and just how, to, how we tend to de-escalate arguments in our relationship. And it hasn't been an easy road for us. Um, you know, it's a learning curve. I don't think anybody is just naturally amazing at communicating in general, but especially in, in emotionally charged situations. So I just thought we could share a little bit of our experience and what we've learned about how to de-escalate um, arguments in our relationship. Yeah. But on that note, I think that I think that we uh, are really good when it does come to arguments. Uh, I don't... I, in, None of my previous relationships have we been so calm and non-abusive or (laughs) we don't start yelling. Like, I don't think we've ever raised our voice. Mm. Um, So I think straight off the bat, that's that's one of the main things that that just defuses an argument before before, it gets out of hand. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, okay, well, we could talk a little bit about that as well because, um, you know, previously in relationships, like I was a bit crazy and I think we both had pretty fiery pasts and Dan sometimes tells me what he used to do and say to his girlfriends and I can't believe it because I couldn't imagine him doing that to me. Wounded masculine. Yeah. But like same here, you know, like I would completely emasculate um, my boyfriends and I would yeah like it, we would scream and yell and there'd be throwing and there'd be like in some cases hitting so that is just so far from where we are with our relationship but in saying that we I always feel like there's room for improvement and we're mm-hmm. we're doing our our best I think mm-hmm. there agreed anything, anything you want to add on that on your past <laughs> Oh, no. No, we won't go there. (laughs) Yeah, there's the past is the past. We we learn from it. And I think we've all been at that point where we've been a bit cray cray. Um, And yeah, I just, I'm just so grateful for you and our relationship because all of those experiences allowed me to appreciate what we have now so much more. So I appreciate those experiences. Um, But yeah, don't want to go back there. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, totally. Okay, so let's give an example. So we were actually discussing like a couple minutes ago. We're like, okay, well, let's talk about a fight. And we couldn't even really remember a fight. We're going to give an example. We don't remember what we were fighting about because we don't usually fight. And our fights are not really um, severe. And I don't think they're chronic as in... They're not, we don't fight over the same thing over and over again. We tend to clear shit up and we're like, this is what we need. And then we make the adjustments and we tend to not revisit things over and over again. Mm -hmm. Um, So anyway, this one time, our most recent argument, um, I don't know what the fuck we were arguing about. We were arguing about something. No idea. Yeah. And us arguing is basically us not agreeing. We're just so get agreeing, but we can feel because we're both so intuitive and so connected to each other. It feels emotionally so emotionally um, charged, even when there's no raised voices. We just can feel the energy of the other person is not copacetic. And so we, um, we really like it really does trigger us. So um, basically what happened is we were arguing and then Dan was like, you know what? I'm just going to give you some time to cool down and to, yeah. well, I don't remember I, exactly. I packed my said. bag, my laptop bag. Cause yes. I think we were supposed yeah. to be working together that day yes. and I packed my laptop bag without really saying anything. And I was angry. I was like, F this, I'm going, <laughs> I need some space. And this is what I was saying to myself. And I came out and said, I'm going to go to my dad's and work and give you some space. Yeah. And 
immediately that triggered me because like my core fear is that like the guy is going to leave and I have a core fear of abandonment. And, um, so there was that charged in me, but at the same time I could recognize that this wasn't even, he wasn't doing it for me. Like, and I think that pissed me off more was that he was like turning it around on me and trying to be like, um, Hey, I'm doing this for you. You like how I responded it, how I interpreted from my wounded perspective was like, Hey, you need to calm down. I'm going to give you some space because I'm fine, but you need to settle down. I'm going to give you some, some breathing space. And so, um, I know that's not how he bent it, but I was also angry that he didn't just own it, that it was for him. And I said to him, um, like, I don't know verbatim what I said, but it was more along the lines of like, you want some space and you're making this about me. Why can't you just say that you need some space to cool down rather than you're like gifting me space because this is for you. And I don't, did I mention that it triggered me and, and like the abandonment thing? Because we know that's one of my core I can't remember if you said it at the time or if it was a little bit later. Yeah. Now. So anyway, he was very receptive. Like when I said that, um, like, don't make this about me when this is really about you. Like, why don't you just communicate what you need? And I was like, I really wish that, you know, you, you would just openly communicate what you need more with me because I just, I don't know otherwise. And so he took his bag off. He like held my hand, you know, we sat down and we were really able to communicate, um, really openly, um, with each other. And we were able to resolve that. And that's just, that's a typical kind of argument for us where we get emotionally charged. There's no yelling involved, but we're definitely, um, there's tension. Mm-hmm. There's definitely tension. And I think both of us are avoidant. So I'm anxious avoidant where I will just like um, ignore and like kind of like standoffish attitude, but not saying anything more of like passive aggressive, like kind of keeping my distance. And then I think maybe you're more avoidant. I'm Correct more avoidant. me if I'm wrong. Um, <clears throat> and you kind of shut down and you just go quiet. Yeah. And I think... That's like, well, when I said that, it was coming from a place of I'm pissed off. I don't want to escalate this situation. I need some time out, but I don't want to talk about it now. So that was my way of trying to diffuse it. But that's the importance of understanding communication. And I didn't realize that I was not communicating until Marcy pointed it out. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, that's my pattern of avoidance. It's just like I need some space. I'll make it seem like it's about you and trying to keep the peace and get out of there so I can diffuse. Um, so that's where it was coming, like, from mm-hmm. my point of view, that's where I was coming from. And I'm like, I was saying to you just before we got on here that I always used to have tonsillitis and I struggled with my communication for a long time. And that's a sign of your throat chakra when you're not communicating properly. Um, and I haven't had tonsillitis, I don't think, since we've been together. Wow. Which is interesting. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, that's really cool. And I have noticed and I have spoken to Dan about how I feel like um, he doesn't really communicate his needs and I have to like be... A, like more proactive and vigilant about making sure that his needs are met because otherwise I feel like he kind of just shuts down and doesn't communicate what he needs and obviously because I love him I I um want to find out and I want to give that to him but the last time that we had that argument that we just spoke about just now when I said to him like look um you need to communicate you know, what it is that you are feeling and what it is you need from me. Um, he has been better about, like, I feel like you have been better about Mm -hmm. just communicating whether you're feeling like triggered and yeah. And, and for me from that coming from that habit, it feels uncomfortable. It feels Mm -hmm. uncomfortable to bring something up when I'm feeling it because I'm not used to it. And I think that comes from a pattern of in past relationships. If I brought that up, if I, if I, faced the issue then and there it would end up all hell breaks loose because we would just be butting heads and it'll be a fight to win and no one's listening but we're both trying to get our point across so you know what i mean so it takes two to tango we also need to 
we need to be listening and understanding and it's a two-way street like you can't do this on your own mm. um and i think that's why, why the pattern is still there i was still hesitant and it was uncomfortable to bring it up um since then but i have and you've straight away said i really appreciate how you speaking speaking up and speaking your truth yeah um, yeah it's it's interesting because because of what you've told me from past relationships like i know that there is like this there is this really fiery guy that can that can come out like he's told me um situation where he was like he yeah like punching (laughs) punching holes um in walls and stuff like I'm not I'm obviously not going to tolerate that but I think do you think that may have something to do with why you're more quiet like you don't want to get yourself to that level where it's going to do that to our relationship whereas I think for me um I think I'm I'm pretty forward with what I need. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? Because I might have my own no, no level of like you're only as aware of yourself as you're aware of yourself and, until someone else mm-hmm. tells you otherwise. But I feel like I do communicate um, pretty openly with you because I also trust that you're not gonna lose it on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that comes um, you know with doing the work as well. I was a boy and I was raging as a boy. I didn't know how to express my emotions, my anger. I didn't know how to get it out. Whereas now I've done some work, some somatic work, and I've learned how to handle that in a bit more of a healthy way, how to express that in a healthy way. Um, A lot of that comes from working with Steph and, you know, just different modalities. And now I learn how to go out on my own and I know how to get that out of my body Mm -hmm. um, so that it doesn't bottle up to the point where I just want to explode and smash something. That's how I used to feel. Like I just, if it wasn't the wall, it was going to be someone. Mm -hmm. So, (laughs) yeah, and and that's the issue. I mean, this is the thing. This is the work. So many men... Uh, and women in in their own way don't know how to express their mm. emotions and this is this is an issue so yeah so that's interesting i think like our the example that we gave just now of our argument was very like hey there's no yelling it's just like we we're so attuned to each other that we could feel that tension rise up and all of that so there's that part of things but then there's also like well what about for couples who are fucking raging and who do get an explosive um fights and that's something we also did discuss because we'll um we'll discuss another um argument that we had I guess where it was the day that I was going to be doing my ayahuasca um I fucking went crazy it was just I was feeling so emotional it was like the second day of my period I was feeling really scared and quite like anxious about going into ceremony and we were taking well I had the kids in my car and we were taking them to Dan's mom and I was following um Dan and anyway basically I lost my way I lost him and I was like frantic because I didn't know how to get to his mom's and I had the music on my phone I had the music on for the kids because the kids wanted the music and I was like I called him because I had to pull off somewhere random and the, the baby was crying and I was just feeling so overwhelmed and I was like oh my gosh like there was a truck there when you turned off I couldn't see that you turned off I was in the other lane blah, 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 blah. and like I was going off and he was just like trying to calm me down like trying to provide solutions but I just like wasn't I wasn't there for it I was so emotionally charged I was totally it's really out of character for me wasn't it like I'm not it usually was, like that it was really out of character really out of character so he could have gone to and reflected that right he could have he could have um given me what I was giving him and been like what the fuck blah 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 but which I think years ago you probably would have done um but then by the time I'll let you share your side of it but by the time I got to his mom's after he calmed me down and everything it was fine like I could we could hug each other and I apologized for like going crazy and I said thank you so much for not getting angry and then you said oh I fucking did (laughs) (laughs) I said don't worry about that I got angry I raged but I did it in a safe environment in a safe container in my car where I pulled over because I did I gave you every 
option. I sent you the address, the drop pin. You, all you do is press a button, and you you had the directions. I offered to come back and pick up the kids. I offered to. I turned around, and no, no solution was, was good. So I pulled over and in, went into a, an empty car park, and I just let go. Just started screaming in my car, hitting my steering wheel, and not at mass. Just. I knew that I had this bottled up rage because there'd been a few things. It'd been a stressful time over the last probably month that I was dealing with some stuff already as well. And I just let my inner child out. I let little Daniel have his voice heard and he just started screaming, it's not my fault the truck was there. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was an F word in there as well. Um, swearing and it's like, is totally okay on this podcast. Okay, yeah, I was just like, it's not my fucking fault the truck was there. I'm doing the best that I can. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fuck. And I just started screaming and screaming and I then I ended up crying and letting it all out because I knew that I needed to get that out because I had been bottling things up for a few weeks and it wasn't about what just happened. It was just the fact that I needed to get that out Mm -hmm. in a safe way on my own where no one else was a part of it. And then afterwards I could just take some deep breaths and come in calm and grounded. Ah, I feel good. I'm better. That's out of my body. I don't have to carry that anymore. Yeah, um, and then you could hold space hold for space me for and and be willing and ready to forgive me and, like, hold me in your arms rather than still be angry at the fact that I was angry. And I think there's a couple of points I want to make on what um, Dan said. Um, the first thing is, is, like, some of you might be thinking, well, that's a big fucking release for your chick, like, you know, getting frustrated with you and going off or whatever. Like, that's a big release. But this is just it. There's so much pent up emotion in so many of us that what we really require is this really big fucking release. Right. So sometimes when you do an exaggerated release and just like let everything out, anything that can that has been stored in your body, any frustration, whether it was from your mom, your dad, your son, what Whatever, your friend, your coworker, all of that shit that you haven't processed is still in your body. So when we go and do a proactive release like that, we are like releasing so many toxins from our body. So it was so good of him um, to do that. So he did this massive release. And the other thing is he sheltered me from it, right? So if you have these big emotions in your body and your partner is the one person that fucking triggers you more than everybody, then one of the smartest things you can do and for the health of your relationship is to step away and do that. Do not let your relationship be the punching bag, right? You want to process these emotions away. So in whatever capacity you can, at least agree when you guys aren't fighting, hey, the next time we get in a fight, let's separate so that we can process, whether it's just in the other room where you guys can do whatever release feels good for you so you can come back in like in a more loving way. Because a lot of us, we have this like our natural instinct is to want to defend and we want to respond. And then what that does is it triggers the wounded inner child and our partner. And then they come back from a wounded response. And then you get this explosive for in some relationships this very explosive um, dynamic. And Dan and I have both experienced a lot of that in previous relationships. And I think that's why we're so respectful of our relationship now, because that was one of the things that we're very aware of is like, you can't take shit back. Like once you say something, once you call someone a piece of shit, once you say you're a slut and you're an asshole, you like, you can't ever take those words back. You can apologize for them. You can try to make it better, but they came out of your mouth. That's it's, it's done. You've already done that. I don't know if the word is damaged, but you've already made that impact on that person. Right. And so there's just more to heal there. It doesn't mean you can't come back from that. Of course you can, you can definitely come back from, you know, I believe you can come back from anything as long as you have two willing parties. Um, but we just didn't want to cause that layer of complexity. We're like, look, there's enough shit to heal here. Like we don't need to do that. And so we're very protective of our, our relationship that we process 
separately. And I, you know, I do the same thing with Dan. Like if I'm feeling really upset or whatever, I try to do my own processing before I bring it to him especially if it's something, um, that I'm upset with him about. Like I try to deal with my shit about it first and then I can come to him, um, in a loving way because one of the challenges in relationship is that we come to our partner trying to solve something, but we're emotionally charged. And when we're emotionally charged, we tend to insult or shame our, the inner child of our partner. And so, because I'm so aware of that and because I don't want to emasculate him because I know I am a strong woman and I'm very, um, good with my words and I have a sharp tongue. If I wanted to, I never want to use that on him. So I do my best to process my shit first and then, um, come, come to him when I'm in a lot more calm state. Mm. And um, j- just and just touching on that as well, back to the to the release. Um, something that I was saying is, I didn't feel like I needed to release like that at, at, as well, but I just intuitively did know that I needed to release. And the thing is, when you release like that, once you start and you let it out, you just go, you know what? I'm going to exaggerate this and get it out. There's so much more that just comes out, mm-hmm. and these thoughts just rush through your head from this, from that, that experience, this experience. The kids did this, the kids did that, and like, you know, nothing. It's the kids, but it's just all these little triggers that you start thinking about as you release, you know. And it's it just, it is so healthy. Just it's such a like a weight is off, lifted off your shoulders when you when you get that out. So I know for people that are listening that haven't had experience with that, it's um, it's a little bit different. So I just wanted to touch a bit more on that. It's not like I wanted to rage like that, but when I did start, it it got a lot more intense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I was actually saying today in a live training I did where I was talking about, like, don't deny that anger, you know? Like, don't feel like your anger isn't justified or that you need to tone it down and you need to pull it back because it's not, you know, a direct um, relation to the, the size of the argument or whatever. Like, when we suppress our emotions... Um, we're suppressing ourselves. When we deny our emotions, we are denying ourselves. And for us to feel fully in our power, we need to be fully okay with it. Like little Daniel needed to fucking rage in that moment. And for you to deny him and for you to be like, no, that's not appropriate for what happened. It makes him wrong. Mm. And you're making, and in essence, you're making yourself wrong. So obviously do it within a safe container in your own vehicle is a really great way. (laughs) to do it but um yeah I thought we could also um just give you a couple tips in regards to well if you're how to either de-escalate an argument or how to prevent an argument or to um not have the, argue, the same arguments in the future I think one of the core things it sounds so basic but I don't think a lot of couples do it it's like actually asking for what you need not Mm -hmm. from an emotional place like not being in mid argument being like well you don't do this and this is what I need but really coming together and being like this is what I need and that those needs can be in the context of relationship like for example like when I told Dan like look it doesn't make me feel safe when you say I'm gonna leave like that just triggers my anxious, you know, little girl who's like, is he leaving for good? Like, does he love me? All these really ridiculous, but that's just how she feels, um, responses. And so I communicated to him, like, you can't just leave. Like we, we need, you know, we need to sit down and and talk about things. Um, and obviously within our relationship, it's appropriate for us to do that because none of us are like attacking the other person. If it is so emotionally charged that you guys are like now abusing each other, don't sit and continue the conversation for the sake of having the conversation, you know, give yourself a bit of a, um, a breather on that. And then also like truly asking the other person what they need, um, you know, like, oh, um, I'm, I, th- I feel like I'm pretty attuned to what Dan wants. Like I know his triggers. Um, I know his core wounding. So I'm very um, aware and conscious to not trigger 
those in him. Like, I never want to poke at a soft spot Mm. for him. Um, And I think that's one of the keys to us not having these explosive fights. It's like, there's sometimes I want to say something just obnoxious or insulting, and I don't because I don't want to hurt him. And, um, like, for what? (laughs) There's, there's there's no win that comes out of that. Yeah. And I think uh, we're also very good at, um, obviously, we can pick up each other's energy and we can tell if something isn't quite right. And I think what we are really good at is us just checking in and mm-hmm. just saying, you know, for example, the other day you were, you were a bit quiet and I could tell you were, you were a little bit off and I just, I just asked, babe, are you okay? And you went, yeah. And then about 10 minutes later I was like, are you sure you're all right? Is everything all right? I mean, okay. And then, then you opened up a bit more. You said, yeah, I'm, I just I'm, I don't know what it is. I'm just not feeling quite right. I'm feeling a little bit anxious. I'm just not quite right. But just that little check-in, it helps Master feel more safe because I'm acknowledging her and letting her know that I'm there. And, and I will ask as well. It's like, is, what can I do to make things better? How can I help? Or, mm-hmm. you know, just, just that's the communication. Just taking that instead of let's go back a few years to the old me and be like, what the fuck's her problem today? You know, it's, <laughs> it's such a different energy and such a different point of view. It's not about me. Um, uh, it's about her and just checking in with each other and caring, truly caring for each other and protecting your, your relationship with each other. Um, and that's, that's it. I just generally care so much about Mars. If something's not right, I, I just want to know how can I help? What's bothering you? Let's resolve this. What can we do to resolve it now? Um, yeah, and I think I, I think just the act of asking is sometimes all people need because it's that. It, yeah, and it's also that if you are feeling anxious, if you are feeling whatever you're feeling, it's like the person is addressing like, okay, I'm I'm seen, I'm cared for, I'm loved, I'm safe, and it's just kind of. Um, putting that inner child a little bit more reassured. She's just feeling a little bit more calm and everything. And so just sometimes even asking the question can make a really big shift um, for someone. So I think one of the, I guess the final tip I have is um, have some ground rules about what arguments are allowed to look like, like what you are willing to tolerate and what is just like absolutely a no. So for me, yelling and any kind of violence is a no and name calling uh, and insulting is no. It's just completely out of bounds. And mm-hmm. not that you've ever done that. I'm not, I don't feel like I've ever had to call him out on, you know, this is out of bounds. But as you, you know, go through your journey of, of getting to know your partner more and, and and are triggering each other, then you can get more clarity around, oh, and like like we did with our last week. Oh, and by the way, you're also not allowed to just pretend you're doing something for me and then leave. <laughs> So we're getting more clarity, you know, more clarity about what it is that um, you're willing to accept and mm. and not. And I don't think we've ever had to have a strategy to diffuse a situation. Like I know couples have strategies to diffuse, but if you do feel like something is, your arguments tend to get out of control, then have some kind of pattern interrupt for sure. What is something that one or both of you can do to completely change the you're laughing what <laughs> i think it was was it steph and christine's oh yeah yes, the the so uh, uh, steph and Osifandos, he, he was talking in one of his podcasts that this is what he did as a pattern interrupt and i said to mars i said i'm gonna do this next time we have an argument and Please it was don't. <laughs> and it was laying down on the ground on lifting his back, up lifting, lifting up his, his back. legs over his head his feet over his head uh and just yeah. kicking his legs or something and <laughs> something completely ridiculous where I'm like, uh, you got to laugh. Uh, you, that's going to, that's going to interrupt. <laughs> yeah, the situation. exactly. So whatever it is for you that will, will interrupt that flow of, you know, emotion, pause it for a second. So you can think a little bit more clearly and a little bit more rationally. So you're not emotionally charged and then you can come to a better solution. Mm. And I think, and I think as well, um, 
not making your partner's um, not not attitude um, not making just not making it about you. Like if something is putting you, if your partner is off for whatever reason, if they're they're not their normal self, if you can tell they're a bit. Um, they're a bit off just don't make it about you and try to see from their perspective and understand their point of view first instead of reacting it's just try to you know see where they're coming from um and and again it just comes back to that checking in Mm -hmm. with them before reacting and just going you know um lashing out um yeah it's just try and go one layer deeper and and see where they're coming from and see what's wrong. Yeah, make them feel supported first because if, if anything, that's going to diffuse them and help them, you know, probably pivot their emotions a little bit as well. And you can definitely come to a better solution that way. Okay, guys, I hope you got some powerful takeaways from this episode. If so, please share it with someone. And if you haven't done so already, please review and subscribe as it helps us to spread our message of inspiration. Sending you all so much love and I'll see you on the next episode of the Hustler's Guide to Flow.